Welcome to a World of Good podcast. I'm Nate Tapman. And I'm Andrew Gale. And we are two friends who love Jesus, care about the church, and travel the world to share stories of people who do the same. Our conversations happen in all kinds of places. Like a coffee shop in an airport terminal. Or even the back of a crowded taxi. But no matter where we go, from Argentina to Zimbabwe, we capture stories of the good God is doing around the world. And we hope those stories will do you a world of good. Welcome to a World of Good podcast. My name is Nate Tatman, and I am sitting here in Germany at the Germans Pastors Retreat, and we've already had one interview, and I'm not sure exactly when this is going to air, but this interview took place in November of 2021. I had the awesome privilege, or have the awesome privilege, of speaking with Sebastian Scalonia. Did I get that right? Did yeah, I say exactly. that right? Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. Yes. Yes. I'm trying. I, I I need to say it with my Italian accent. Sebastian Scalonia. Scalonia like Bologna. Scalonia like, like Bologna. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. Well, Sebastian, thank you for joining me and, and being here. And I interviewed Tillman Fry last evening. And he lives in the same city as I do. He does. In oh, Wolfsburg. that's right. That's in right. Wolfsburg. In Wolfsburg. Yeah, in the city of Volkswagen. Yes, yeah. that's where the Volkswagens are, are made. Exactly. And, yes. uh, that's right. I'm glad you made that connection. And just so our listeners know, because I know you're you're kind of nervous about it a little bit, but English is not your first language. No, not my first and not my second language. It is language. not your so, second. First of all, I want to say, Thank you very much to um, let me be here. Yeah. So I'm really honored that you asked me. It's it's a, it's a pleasure to get to know you. Yeah. 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 It's, thank it's you. A, it's a very nice atmosphere, and thank you for being on this podcast. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. So English is my third language. Your third language. Yeah. I studied at school, and we have bilingual classes mm -hmm. in geography mm -hmm. and also in history. Mm -hmm. And now I like to listen very much to English speakers. So ah. listening, my, my listening quality is better than my speaking quality. <laughs> so I want to apologize <laughs> now for all the words that, that I'm lacking. <laughs> no worries. What, what do you listen to in English? TV I, shows or podcasts? No, or? I listen to podcasts. I listen to YouTube sermons. Okay. Leaderships, yeah. uh, leadership sermons and uh, yeah. leadership podcasts. Yeah. Who, I love it. Who are some of your most helpful leadership, your, your, some of the most helpful leaders who you like to listen to on the topic of leadership? I listen to Patrick Lencioni mm -hmm. and yep. I love yep. to listen to Craig Rochelle. Yeah, yeah. Those are two great, great. They are always producing content on yes. leadership and good content. And it's they helped me a lot for my calling. Yeah, very good. And we'll get into that for sure. And and so going back to the language thing. So you grew up here in Germany. Yes. In uh, in Wolfsburg. In, in Wolfsburg. You know, yeah. My yeah. parents came here in the seventies. So both are immigrants, mm -hmm. and they came here because. In Italian, there was no work. Mm -hmm. So and my dad came here with uh, 17 years. Okay. Wow. So, and then he started to work at the Volkswagen company. Uh -huh. And then he got to know, or got to know mm -hmm. my, my mom. Okay. Who was the, 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 the daughter of an Italian immigrant okay. who came in his 60s. He was 60, maybe. Wow. No, 60. No, my, my, my grandfather was 40. Wow. So he came to Germany to work and brought his family here. Okay. And there was a small village in Wolfsburg where all the Italians were put in. Ah. So and there they met. It was a, a small Italian island. You can wow, call it. yeah. In Wolfsburg. Little little Italy. Little in Italy in Wolfsburg. Yeah. And in the in the sixties in Wolfsburg we had fourteen thousand Italians. Really? Yeah, and yeah. It, but, I mean, that's a small, that's a small town, a small city, small city with mm -hmm. hundred twenty-two thousand mm -hmm. uh, inhabitants, mm -hmm. and then fourteen thousand Italian. Right now, we have five thousand. Okay, okay. So your parents came here with their family, mm -hmm. with their parents. My mom, my dad came alone. Your dad, with his came brothers, as a seventeen-year-old, he yes. traveled and moved to a different country on his own. Yeah, they, wow. he had no chances to. Yeah. to work to develop because he he is from a big family mm -hmm. he had eight uh, brothers and sisters mm -hmm. 
So he had to choose, what shall I do? Yeah. I have to eat something. Yeah. So yeah. I go to Germany. And and you said he came with some of his brothers? Yes, with two and, brothers. Okay, with two brothers. And so he wasn't entirely alone. At no. least there was the three of no, them. No, no, And then there were all the other Italian guys. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it probably felt like home yes, after he exactly. got here. We had a barber shop, Italian, <laughs> Italian supermarket, everything. Uh, and where were where was your family from in Italy? My father's from Sicily. Okay. And my mom is from Apulia. Wow. From the the heel, you call it the heel. Yeah. From, from yeah. Yeah. And so it wasn't. It wasn't even from what I've heard and what from what I'm learning. It wasn't even just that they were from Italy, but they're from Southern Italy, yes. which is in some ways a much different culture than other parts of Italy, Central and Northern Italy. I mean, Italy all up and down the boot, if you will, has kind of a different culture in each kind of region and section. Yes, correct? you're right. And the Italians, the South Italian would say Italian starts below Naples. <laughs> and the, the Northern Italians say all the dumb people live <laughs> south of uh, Naples. So there's there's this kind of back and forth. Huh? Exactly. Yeah. yeah. That's it. Yeah. Sicily, I, I was able to travel there once and it's very beautiful, very beautiful there. It's beautiful, it's hot, yeah. nice people, good weather, yeah. and good food. Yeah. yeah. What, I go once a year uh -huh. to Sicily to visit my mom. She lives there at the beach. Yeah. And what what food do you crave the most? What Italian food, home food from home do you crave the most? Pasta uh -huh. and pizza. Pots, and that's yeah. that's everything. Yeah, and, and I cook by myself. I love to cook. Yeah, yeah. I I can relax by cooking. Okay, yeah. that's one of your stress relievers, huh? Yes, yes. Perfect. So you grew up in a home speaking just Italian. Yes. Uh, until you were four, and you started school. Mm -hmm. And so Italian. You grew up in Germany, but Italian was your first language. Yes, my first language, and now it is my second language because at school, at kindergarten. I only spoke German. Yeah. So, and my whole day is filled with German mm -hmm. words. Mm -hmm. So, Italian is uh, is only a small part. Mm -hmm. When I visit my my dad, then we speak Italian or <laughs> Sicilian. Ah, uh, the dialect. It's much. It's different. It's yeah. different. A little bit different. Yeah. It's 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 different. It's, of course. Yeah. So when I talk with my children, I have two children, two boys, uh -huh. six and two. Uh -huh. One is called Levi, and the second is called Jesse. You call it Jesse in yeah. English. Yeah. Yeah. And I speak Italian with both guys. Uh -huh. <laughs> guys, you say guys. My yeah. sons. Yeah. Yeah. I try to give him, give them a, a good. Uh, yeah, a good start yeah. with the Roman languages. Yeah. And I hope they will speak Spanish one day, French and <laughs> whatever. And your wife? Is your wife from Germany? My wife, Mary, yeah, she is from Germany. She's original German she's, German she from is. a German village. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And how did you guys meet? Want to listen, listen, or you want to have the, the spiritual answer <laughs> or the, the real <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I, somewhere in between. Uh, is there a middle? I met her at the discotheque, oh, yeah. at the bar, yeah, yeah, yeah. In, a, in a time where clubbing, uh -huh. clubbing was, uh -huh. was my life. Yeah. And I met her and I saw her, I said, it's a beautiful girl, but she was engaged with another guy. Wow. And I didn't look at her because of the Italian respect. Yep. I said, you can look at the, at the girl from uh -huh. another guy. And she said, or she thought, she told me afterwards, what kind of an arrogant guy? He didn't watch, he'd look at me. And I said, <laughs> I said, yeah, because I'm respectful, not because I'm arrogant. Yeah. Oh, okay. And then the she, signals got mixed yeah, there. Huh? And then she started to, in, to be interested in me. And uh -huh. yeah. And, yeah. And then we met. Very good. And how long have you guys been married? 13 years. Wow. 13 years. And we have two sons. And two sons. Levi and Jesse. And so you're a pastor at a church? I'm a pastor since 10 years right now. Okay. At the church where I where I met Jesus. Hmm. How did you meet Jesus? It was in 2002, at the end of 2002. Mm -hmm. I can say that if you would see me at this time, you would say, oh, he is a good football player. He has a good job at Volkswagen. He is surrounded by nice people, nice guys. He must be very fulfilled. Mm. 
but I was so empty mm. and nobody knows or nobody knew it. Mm -hmm. In in my heart, I was bleeding. Mm. And I had an uncle, who he was, we call it the house mice. He was the housekeeper of our church or mm -hmm. the, how you call it, mm -hmm. the one who, who looks after the, the building. And maintenance yeah, or maintenance. manager of the, the facility. The facility and, manager, exactly. Yeah. And he was living next to the church. Okay. And every time he, he saw me, he said, Sebastian, you need Jesus. Mm. You need Jesus. And I said, no, I don't need Jesus. I need more party. <laughs> I need more alcohol. I need more girls. Oh, wow. I need more of all of this. Yeah. And he said, no, no, you are not right. I said, you need Jesus. Mm. And how old, how old were you? Like what time, what age period was this? It was 2003, 2003. I was 21. 21. Okay. 21. Yeah. There came the, I can't exactly say like it happened, but I was, I was feeling very empty every night I went to bed. Because after clubbing, after party, after being drunk, I was asking myself, is this everything? Mm -hmm. Is this life? Mm -hmm. If you die tomorrow, what will happen? Mm -hmm. What did you leave in this world? First, I, I tried to, to, to avoid all those, not thinking, how you say? The voices in your head? Yes, or, exactly. Okay. The voices in yeah. my head. I, I, I tried to, to let them be still with more alcohol, mm. with more clubbing. But it didn't work out. And did did you have in your house growing up? Did you guys go to church? No. Did you have a no, any type of a Christian no. upbringing? So your uncle, uh, my uncle, Michele. Michele. I, have, I have to to to, name, yeah, to say his name yeah. because he had uncle Michele. Uncle Michele. He was you can say he said the Jehovah Witness witnesses mm -hmm. they, they go on my nerves or they get they, they went on my <laughs> nerves. He said. At, at work. And then he, he started to read his Bible by his own. And then he converted to Christ. Mm. And then he started to, to talk to every, every, every creature, not every, yeah. every creature he saw, he met, said, you have to convert to Jesus. Wow. So, and then he started with the family also. And I was one of them. I was the son, the oldest son of his oldest sister. So when he talked to me first, I said, I didn't want to listen. But then two years later, I started to read a book, which he gave me. It's called Jesus, My Destiny. Mm. I started to read. I started to have a lot of questions. And then I said, this was my, the best moment of my life. I opened up the Bible, a Bible, which a friend of mine gave me one day because she said, you know, I don't need this Bible. I will not read it. I said, you know, you know what? I think this this book will help me one day. Mm. And at, on the first page, her teacher has, has wrote something that was written, I believe in the sun, even if it's not shining. I believe in love, even if I don't sense it. Or mm -hmm. something. Mm -hmm. I believe in God. Even I can see him. Mm. And I said, yes, I would like to, to believe in this God because I, I believed in some kind of God. When I was a kid, I went to Catholic church and I helped the priest to do the, what do you call it? The communion. The communion, mm -hmm. the service. Yeah. I helped him. So there was an affinity to, to God, mm -hmm. some, some, some desire to to know who is he. Mm -hmm. And when I, I read the book and then start to read the Bible, I fell in love with Jesus. Mm. And that's what I'm telling all the people say, what happened to you, Sebastian? One day I met a, a former classmate. She said, only God could have changed you. <laughs> I said, thank you. That's a big com compliment. Well, for since my you God. mentioned it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you know what kind of guy yeah. I was. Wow. So only God could change it. Yeah. And then reading the Bible and yeah, I fell in love with Jesus because I, I, I saw he had a kind of love I've never, never experienced in this world. Mm. Mm. 
and where where did the church come in to that when you when you changed your life and started following Christ? That's a good question. That's a really good question. You know, I had some troubles when I was young with a boyfriend of a good friend of mine. He started to persecute me, mm. and it's it was on a Saturday. <laughs> it was on a Saturday. My uncle who lives at the church, the church was yeah. celebrating birthday. Mm -hmm. And I was there totally scared of the guy who was persecuting me. And my uncle told me, hey, why don't you visit the youth group who's meeting right now? And I said, I don't need this youth group. They will tell me don't have sex <laughs> before the marriage. <laughs> don't drink. <laughs> don't go climbing. I don't need this guy. He said, try it. Go there. And then something really special happened, Nate. I went downstairs to the room where the youth, uh, youth group was meeting and I felt a kind of warm love surrounding me. Mm. It was a, yeah, a game changer mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. my life. And I was thinking, what kind of drugs are you taking? <laughs> yeah, what kind of drugs? What are you doing here? I want to have the same feeling yeah. more and more. Then I asked them, what are you doing here? And they say, hey, Sebastian, it's nice to, nice to see you here. We are praying for you since two years. Oh, my word. And then I started weeping. I said, why are you throwing away your time, yeah. wasting your time to pray for a guy like me? And they said, because we have the desire that you got to know Christ. Mm. And then I started visiting, visiting this group. And then a pastor called George Schule. Mm -hmm. He's Goliath. He's a big <laughs> man. He's here or, also. He explained me how I, I receive forgiveness for my sins. And you know, Nate, I was really scared of dying and then standing before God and explain to him about all my sins. And I knew that I've done a lot of sins. Mm. A lot of mistakes. I've heard so many people. Mm -hmm. And then he, he spoke about the cross and I said nothing to him, but I went home. And then I bowed down on my knees yeah, yeah. in front of my window. I looked in the sky and I said, Jesus, please forgive my sins. I want to have this burden on my shoulders anymore. I, I'm, I'm broken. Mm. Please forgive me. And this was the, the moment I felt for the first time a release of weight from my body. Mm. I wasn't scared anymore to, to die because mm -hmm. something, someone has paid for me, for my sins. And then I never asked myself again, what is the sense of this life? You call it sense? Mm-hmm. Since or purpose? The purpose. The purpose What's of your this, life. What is my yeah. purpose? Since yeah. this day, it was at the end of 2002, I knew my purpose is to live and honor God, to mm. live with God and to honor Him. Mm. Wow, wow. And and so from, from there, how did you get from that point to now being a pastor? Oh, it was a long run. <laughs> then I started to, to attend youth group and the church service. Mm -hmm. So I remember when a, a lady who was selling the books at the, at the church, Bibles and all kind of other books, she said, do you want to buy a, a Bible, Sebastian? I said, no, 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 no. I'm, I'm new here and I don't know if you have the real Bible here. <laughs> Maybe you try to convince me, yeah, this Jesus guy, I, I, I love Jesus, but... I'm not sure if this church is doing things right. So I was skeptical. Yeah. 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 Skeptical. So is that a is that an Italian skepticism or no, I don't know. I was afraid, you know. Yeah. Maybe it was the devil who was yeah. talking to me. No, yeah. never buy a Bible here. Yeah. So interesting. Then I said, I, I want to go to a bookstore and buy a Bible there because they won't betray me. Mm. They are neutral. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I went there, I said, I need a Bible which every stupid teenager will understand. <laughs> and they said, oh, we have here the Hoffnung für alle. It's called, it's, a, it's in translation means it's hope for everybody. 
And then I saw the the the, the booklet, the uh -huh. book. I said, "Oh, it's the same Bible <laughs> that the lady <laughs> that was the trying lady to, was trying to, <laughs> to give me, to yeah? sell you." Yeah. So and then I started to read. I started to read every day because my purpose was to to convince all of my friends that mm. they need Jesus. So and then I I wrote everything down in the Bible at the at, in the back, alcohol, clubbing, sexuality, a moral issue, and because I wanted to have Bible verses to speak with my friends, mm -hmm. and then I, I I spoke with a lot of friends, and uh, some of them said, "You are really crazy. <laughs> you are on drugs, or you yeah you've lost your mind." I say yeah, maybe I've lost my heart. I say. I gave it to someone. <laughs> mm. And then after reading, after reading a lot and attending church a lot, which helps a lot, maybe some young guys are listening, <laughs> Bible and uh, service. So the, the elders of the church um, said, hey, why don't you think about something special? I said, what? Going to Bible college, Bible school we see that there is some kind of calling on your life. You are gifted in explaining the Bible. I don't know if I'm really gifted because my first sermon for the youth group was one hour and 45 minutes. Oh my <laughs> word. <laughs> <laughs> almost two hours. Yeah, it was almost so. And the first, the, some of them were, yeah, they... They they went into to cinema. They went to a bar. They said, "It's you're horrible," <laughs> because I want to say everything. Everything, I knew. Yeah, everything. Yeah, so, yeah. But this <laughs> this voice of the elders um, touched me. Mm. This go to Bible college and try maybe. Huh? But the problem was I was working for VW, and you know all the immigrants were happy if they were working at the. The production line. Yeah, yeah, the assembly line. Assembly line. Yeah. So, and I was not working on the assembly line because I studied at school mm -hmm. and then I played a few years for the youth group of a professional team in Wolfsburg, mm -hmm. which is sponsored by VW. Mm. So they. And this was what sport? Uh, football. football. You call it soccer. Of course. Yes. 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 And my coach helped me a little bit, a little bit. In terms of working, gotcha, nice, nice position. A, a little bit, yeah, yeah. And you know, for my father, it was a shock when I told him that I'm leaving. I'm, I'm thinking about leaving Wolfswagen to go to Bible college, and he said, "You are crazy. Mm. You are crazy. Send someone else to <laughs> preach. Someone else." Um, should become the priest of this church. Maybe your uncle, he's crazier than you. <laughs> and he said, if you really, if you, if you leave VW, there will be no heritage. Mm -hmm. You call it heritage when someone dies and... Uh, inheritance. Inheritance. Yeah. yeah. Like the... Inheritance. Yeah. You know, he said... Wow. He said, no inheritance for you. Wow. From from him, yeah, yeah, from him. From from him. A, and then he was cutting you off. I will cut you off. Wow. So, and my mom said, if you will leave us here in Wolfsburg to go to Fritzlar, which is the epicenter mm -hmm. of mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> spirituality in Germany yeah. for us, Church of yeah, God, for the Church, it's like Anderson. <laughs> it's she, the Mecca. Yeah, it's the Mecca. <laughs> she said, if you will leave us, we will leave you alone here in Germany. We will leave to Italy. Wow. Forever. And at this time, I had a younger brother. He was 17 years younger than me. And there was a, um, yeah, a special relation because he was like a, my little son. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I played with him and I was the older brother. And everywhere I took him, he said, oh, you are a dad. You are a young dad. So I had to fight a lot of battles. Wow. Not only to leave my job, which was very, very good paid, and you were you, not just good pay, but you were set up for the rest of your life. Yes, for the that, rest of my yeah, life. I had a yeah. better job than all the Italian guys. Yeah. So I, at the same time, I was playing soccer and mm -hmm. getting money for playing soccer because I was talented. Mm -hmm. So I, have, I had to leave 
mm. a few things behind your career at Volkswagen, potential career in yes. wherever that would have led it in terms of soccer and who knows at what level that could have led to exactly and, and it was and a, then your family and my family it was a big big sacrifice wow. so when i tell the story now i'm i'm full of peace because mm -hmm. but at this time it was heartbreaking for me yeah at, at what age was that i was 25 yeah I mean, it was 2006 it That's was a big decision uh, at was, that age I was 25, yeah, and the story how God um, convinced me to go there is um, a miraculous story. Mm. If you, I don't know if you're yeah, interested, yeah, in, yeah, sure. You know, I had to to sign the contract to leave Volkswagen, and and yeah, before there was happening something, I said, okay, God, I would go to Volks, uh, I would leave Volkswagen go to Bible college, but you know I need some money because I had to pay for the for the study. Mm -hmm. So, and then I had to pay my um, my apartment, yeah? And I need I needed 1,000 euros a month for everything, for travel, for the car, for, for everything. So I said, God, I want to go, but I don't have the money. I started to sell my old time. I had an old timer, a Fiat mm -hmm. from from the year 59. Oh, wow. I sold the old, I sold the old timer. I sold my motorcycle. I sold everything I had to go to Bible college, but the money wasn't enough mm. because the study will take 48 months mm. plus 12 mo other months. So 60 months, I need 60,000 euros. Then I thought, how can I go to my boss and tell her, and she was a dragon, you can mm. call it dragon. <laughs> dragon. Uh, how can I tell her I will leave Volkswagen for becoming a pastor? I said, I, I can go. I can go. Yeah. And then Volkswagen got into a crisis. And Volkswagen sent an email to all employees and said, if you will leave Volkswagen till the 30th of September, you will get a bonus. Hmm. So, and this bonus was 64,000 no euros way. for me. And I needed 60,000. No 000. way. Oh my word. Yes. And the Bible college started at the 3rd of October. So, if you leave till 30 of September, wow. I said, I could start three days yeah. later. Yeah. And it was perfectly Wow. God, God opened God. that door up for you. I was scared yeah. to go and to, to sign the contract. But someone told me this English saying, I said, if God guides, he provides. Mm -hmm. And then something happened the night before I went to sign the contract for leaving Volkswagen. You know, in my mind, I was saying, yeah, I will sign the contract. And what my daddy says, ah, okay, I God, I signed the contract. But I was scared. Absolutely. I was scared. And the night before I was signing, I had a dream. And in this dream, you know, as American, you, 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 you don't like to hear this, but I, I saw two airplanes flying like it happened at, Nine eleven. Nine eleven. But the airplanes fly into the big uh, sky skyscraper. Skyscraper of Volkswagen, and the skyscraper was, des was destroyed completely. Wow! And then in the dream, I got an email, and in, in, the email said, "No bonus money if you will sign the contract. We have to build up the skyscraper. Volkswagen is in a crisis." And then I woke up. And I said, okay, I need to <laughs> sign the sign contract that. <laughs> right now. Yeah. So, and then the next day I went, I signed the contract. Then I, I sent my, my, my papers to the Bible college and everything. And in, in the time of 15 minutes, mm -hmm. after I, I, I throw my, my letter, it's called... You put it in the mail? Put it in the mail. Uh -huh. So then I, that I can apply to the Bible yeah. college. 15 minutes later, in 15 minutes, three calls on my phone. Um, Sebastian, can you come to our church and preach on this or this or this Sunday? 
So it was like a confirmation by God. Oh my you have word. done the right thing. Yeah. Oh, wow. That that's a that's a pretty amazing story. <laughs> so how did your parents respond when you told them what you were doing? They left. Mm. They left Germany. Mm. My 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 father calmed down a little bit mm -hmm. quickly. Mm -hmm. My my mom was in a in a bad situation for herself. She was uh, she had call it psychological problems, psychological like uh, mental health, and not burnout. Mm -hmm. She was um, depression. Depressed. Yeah, yeah, she was depressed. very depressed, and she said, "If I don't go to Italy, there is the sun. I will." Mm. took my life and mm. something she told me afterwards mm. i didn't know i was too young i i didn't understand yeah. also. and she said to my father if you won't come to italy with me i will divorce wow so and then he went to volkswagen and he signed the contract with tears in his eyes and then they also left mm. he also got bonus money and they left to italy mm. and then i started uh, bible college and it was hard yeah it was really hard because then i came home from fritzla I, I visited home every every friday it was 200 kilometer mm -hmm. Wolfsburg to fritzla and i was alone yeah your family and only the rest of the family was there yeah but you had siblings there still your siblings were still there yeah my uncle my my aunt okay. so and friends but no parents no brother yeah it was hard so it was a sacrifice yeah it's four years of bible college was a sacrifice wow you know, for me growing up in a Christian home, I had that support system from my family, mm -hmm. you know, and what I was doing. So I can't imagine putting myself in your shoes, what that would have been like and, and being alone, virtually alone through that. I'm sure God brought people around you during yes. that time. And, and yes, he did. And then uh, there was my future wife, yeah. Mary. Yeah. And yeah, it was, it was hard, but also God, provided for me emotionally mm -hmm. financially got provided in everything mm. and then a few years later my dad come came back with my brother mm. so they are living in kind of divorce situation mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. they are not divorced but it's it's not not easy yeah it's yeah. not easy so i know what broken family what a broken family yeah. means gives you an opportunity to relate to people in your church maybe who have yes. gone through or, or are going through something like that. Yeah, in our city, maybe it's an interesting for the listeners, Wolfsburg is the city with the highest rate of divorce in Germany. Oh, wow. On 2011, we had a, a divorce uh, rate from 63%. Oh, my word. Wow. It's a lot. In your church? Did yes. You, you, we have a lot of people who... by that. Who, who, who divorced then then came to christ and mm. yeah some sometimes people call us the, the church with the uh, most divorced people <laughs> <laughs> but it's a wonderful church yeah. and the church where i got to know christ is now the church which i'm pastoring yeah that's I'm great. really really honored to be there it's uh, yeah that's it's great a, it's a good place for my heart to be yeah. there. yeah so what kind of church do you want your church to be? Oh, that's a good question. I hope it will be the church Jesus want, wants us <laughs> to be. But our church right now is a church who is, we, we, we try to be modern, God-centered, and a church where you can feel, where you can feel God, mm. not only know something with mm -hmm. your mind, but mm -hmm. also with your heart. Mm -hmm. So, but very God-centered mm -hmm. with a clean theology, I hope. Yeah. Yeah. But a life. Yeah. Church is a life. Yeah. Maybe just share, again, majority of our listeners are from the U.S. and, <clears throat> and have that American context. And so maybe just share a little bit. What is the, what is the German culture like? So your city's in this kind of the southern part of Germany? No, is in that, the northern part of it's Germany. It's in the northern part in of Germany. North my German geography is terrible. Oh, so I'm learning. I'm learning. Yeah, and I will okay. get there. It's okay, man. It's okay. <laughs> All right. So northern part of Germany. Northern part. It's in between Hanover and Berlin. Okay. Okay. Yep. That I know where those two places are. So that helps me. And what what's the culture in your city like in terms of 
what is it that people, when they hear church or God or Jesus or pastors, like what are, what's their initial thoughts or reaction? Okay. I have to give you some background. Mm -hmm. So when the city was founded, uh, a Nazi general stood on the, on the highest yeah, place of the city and he said, this city, when we will found it, will be a city with no new churches. Mm. So we had a Catholic church mm -hmm. and the Lutheran state church. Mm -hmm. He said, no new churches. Thank God he, he wasn't a good prophet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so people came to Wolfsburg to work. Mm. So they produced military machines for the Second World War. And uh, yeah, Hitler chose the, this city strategically because in the, it's right in the, it's in the middle. It's in the middle mm -hmm. So it can be attacked by the enemies. Mm -hmm. And people came and, and worked mm -hmm. like, like, sorry for the word, but they work like animals. Mm -hmm. They work and work and work. And they define themselves by the, the amount of money they make. Mm. they made so there was no culture mm -hmm. no no music no culture no theater no yeah very industrial very very working class industrial working class exactly yeah. so family oriented no because yeah. people work from six to two from two to ten from ten to six so there was no family rhythm wow so very yeah your not only your body was attacked by this kind of work yeah but also by also your family yeah so industrial city working hard everything and no focus on on spirituality mm. you know when the nazis took over in germany they 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 destroyed all the paintings mm -hmm. and, and mm -hmm. yeah, they destroyed the arts the and arts. all the they, cultural they took away everything yeah. so and we as a new city founded by the nazis they had all chances to to build up the city like they want to yeah so yeah. it was a yeah for them a perfect city yeah so there's no rush hour in Wolfsburg. so the streets are good it's perfectly organized yeah german yeah so but if there isn't a sense for spirituality, it's very difficult to speak with the people about God because they say, hey, we earn so much money. We are God. Mm. We don't need a God. We only have to work and then spend the money and have fun. Mm -hmm. So, but at, at the beginning, but now people see that money isn't making them happy. Yeah. And the, the big house and the second new car, because we are the city with, the most new cars in whole Germany. So we are not happy. So, and that's for me the hook. I can speak with the people. I say, okay, mm -hmm. you have two cars, nice house. You have everything mm -hmm. three times a year holiday. But what about your soul? Mm. Your soul is crying out for someone mm. who gives you rest. Mm -hmm. And then we can speak with the people. Mm -hmm. They understand that. They they understand. And then we try to be a church who is in between the Catholic Church and the Lutheran Church. We are, a th in Germany, we are called free church. Mm -hmm. And people ask, what is a free church? Are you Catholic? Are you Lutheran? I say, no, 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 we are free. We can decide how to interpret the Bible and say, mm -hmm. and then we can speak. And then people come. We have modern music. Mm -hmm. Our sermons are uh, on on time. Or you, so you're not preaching an hour and forty five minute sermons. No, these days. Is no, in <laughs> Germany we say you can preach about everything, but not over twenty minutes. Twenty minutes. <laughs> <laughs> no, my sermons are thirty minutes. Yeah. Our YouTube listeners will turn off the <laughs> their device if I will preach more than thirty five minutes. Maybe yeah. no. Yeah. Yeah. We try to speak their language. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so, how? What? What are some of the good things happening in your church these days? These days, you know, we have COVID nineteen is all around. Never the world. heard of it. I never, don't know. Never, never heard, heard of yeah. it. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> but we try to to open up the church as much as we can. 
we are as, as a board of elders of the church, we say, if things are allowed, we are doing it. Mm -hmm. We are not scared that that COVID nineteen will, yeah, will took over because we we think God is on control. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we will treat this thing very respectfully. Mm -hmm. Everything we can do, we will do, but we will leave the church doors open mm. because people need Christ. Mm -hmm. So the good things which, which are happening is the church is full. Mm. People are coming. 90% of our people are back. Wow. Yeah. Wow. At the beginning of COVID-19, there was, yeah, um, there was not sure, shall we come, shall we not come? Now they are coming. And in 2021, we have celebrated three baptisms hmm. in a year. For a German church, it's a lot. That is amazing. So, and the, and the last service I will share with the listeners was for me one of the ex, excited. Mm -hmm. One of the most exciting. Yeah, well, not the most exciting, but, but very exciting because I'm... old people came and said, you know, Sebastian, since 60 years I'm a Christian and I didn't baptize. Hmm. Yeah, I had all the answers because I, I or the, why I shall not baptize, but I yeah. know I have to baptize. Wow. So we had a baptize of an 83, 82 old man, 81 years, 80 uh, lady, then 79, 65, 52, and 13 years. Wow. So it was this. So, and we, we are celebrating two church services, one at 9 30 and one at 11 a.m. And it was a blessing for That's everybody. That's awesome. And you know, one thing was very special. The 82-year-old uh, man, it was very difficult for him to, to go in the, bap the baptismal. Yeah, in the baptismal, mm -hmm. yeah. And when he came out, he was standing there like uh, the gladiator. <laughs> he, he, he lifted his arm, he turned to the church and he said, Jesus lived, Jesus lives. Oh, wow. Oh, and this was a, a heartbreaking moment yeah. in a positive way. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it was good. So uh, we experienced a lot of good things, but Nate, a lot of yeah. There is coming a lot of wind in our face. Mm. And the devil knows how he yeah, he mm. can yeah, how you call it. He will destroy the ch the church work. Yeah, just attacks and, yeah. and that sort of thing. So, with that, what are some some of the challenges you guys are facing right now? The or challenges, what, some of the the things that are blowing back into your face. You say, yeah. as you say, no. In in twenty in twenty nineteen and twenty twenty, it was we were sensing hey, the devil is attacking the marriages mm. very heavy. Mm -hmm. So and we have we as a board of elders had to deal with with marriage counseling a lot. Mm. So then in 2021 we we make the experience that the devil was attacking friendships. Mm. Good friends, old friends were fighting against you. Not fighting, but they they were disagreeing mm -hmm. about a lot of things. So we had to counsel them. And yeah, it was another <laughs> phase or Mm -hmm. yeah another season yeah mm -hmm. and, and, mm -hmm. and and now i say okay what's what's coming in the next season which kind of attacks are coming i hope they will not be so bad yeah. like in 2019 and in 2021 yeah. Yeah. but yeah we have some problems you don't know in the u.s yeah, you don't I'm have sure. this problem in the u.s no 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 <laughs> 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 no problems. So the name of this podcast, we call it A World of Good. World and, of good. and so one of the questions we always want to ask is, what good is God doing in your world today? In my personal world in, or in the church? Either one, however you want to answer that. I'm experiencing right now a lot of peace in my marriage, mm. a lot of peace in raising our children, mm -hmm. and a real good understanding for each other in the marriage yeah yeah we had some troubles before mm. but now it's good this is my that's world great. of good yeah yeah and that's in the great. church we have a real good attitudes uh, in in the in the eldership mm -hmm. an attitude uh, towards each other mm -hmm. we meet every monday mm -hmm. we don't look at the watch mm -hmm. and we sit there and talk and speak and and, and 
we are visioning or you call it yeah 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 and and we love the church mm. so this is really really good how many are part of your elder body your elder we group? are eight eight, eight of eight you. people yeah and you work as a as a team together yeah we as a team we are friends we yeah we we speak a lot with each other mm. even we are not in the meetings mm -hmm. so we, we we visit each other and so we are friends Oh, that's great. It's, that's great. It's, good it's necessary. Yes. It's necessary yes. as a pastor, as yes. a leader. So. Yes. Yes. Well, Sebastian, thank you so much for sharing your your story, hearing how God has used you, how he's worked in your life. And so, again, you, you, you did great as sharing your story in, in your third language. Thank you very that much. That was perfect. That thank was you. perfect. And th thank you, Nate. Yeah. It is you you have a really appreciating way of speaking to people. Mm. I I'm I'm touched. Oh, thank thank you. you very much and God bless you, your family, and all the Church of God family in the US. Yeah. You are in my heart. I visited Anderson. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and you you visited Anderson and you did an internship or yeah. something at Church I've, of the I've, Crossing. Correct? I've done an internship for five weeks at, at the Church of God in Edmonton in Canada. And then for one week I visited my teacher Steve Rannick. Ah, Hi Steve. Is yeah. your visit? Then I also met Jim Lyon. Uh-huh. Hi, Jim. Uh-huh. And I spent one of the days of Christmas with Andrew mm -hmm. Gale. There we go. My so, co-host and my boss. Yeah. So Andrew, I can say, Nate is doing great. <laughs> yeah, he's doing great. <laughs> Thank you for sending him to Europe. <laughs> I'll pay you later. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you, Sebastian. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thanks for listening to A World of Good. A World of Good is a podcast production of Global Strategy and Church of God Ministries. Our theme song is Colorado by Leo Flores. If you want to join the conversation, Visit us at Twitter at A World of Good Pod, on Instagram, A World of Good Podcast, or visit our website, chogglobal.org slash A World of Good. And join us next time as we share more stories of good from around the world.